Welcome back, everyone. Entrepreneurs are using TikTok as an affordable way to grow their businesses. CGTN's Nitsa Soledad Perez spoke to two influencers, people who promote products or provide services on social media, and they share their stories of how the social media platform transformed their careers as well as their lives. Gone are the days when TikTok was only used for teenagers posting dance routines and lip syncing challenges. AI will not replace humans. The app has evolved to include an array of almost everything, including small and big business owners maximizing their social reach. No, have you seen what happens to lottery winners? I'm Vivian, you're rich BFF, and you follow me for good money advice. Here's what you should do if you actually happen to win the lottery. Vivian too is a 29 year old self-made millionaire former Wall Street trader turned content creator and daughter of Chinese migrants. She explains finances, investing and equity free of cost to 2.4 million TikTok followers. I put my very first video live on TikTok January 1st of 2021 and I did not expect this at all. I was not going into this hoping to become a creator, but that video went viral. And by the end of the week, I had 100,000 followers. Two years after that first post, she quit a job earning $600,000 a year to pursue this new career. TikTok has allowed Vivian to become a brand on her terms with plans for a book release next year. She also has 1.7 million followers on Instagram. Rich people set up their kids for success long before they're born, and it's not even that complicated. I feel very grateful for TikTok because during the pandemic, when people were on their phones more and more, TikTok was a place that was ripe for growth and creator building. Um, it felt like the only platform at the time that wasn't rewarding the traditional influencers who were just posting photos of their fabulous life and their bikinis, but instead it felt like because of how the For You page was designed, mm -hmm. anybody, could be the next big thing. Anybody could become, you know, a big name on that platform. You can go to ninja school in Japan. And there are others like Vivian. We've seen a lot of professionals, doctors, lawyers, sharing tips about their particular field on TikTok in a way that we, we haven't seen before. Jen Ruiz is a lawyer turned full-time travel blogger and author, five-time Amazon bestseller and TEDx speaker. The Great Pyramid is the only ancient world wonder left. The Sphinx is included with your ticket. So TikTok became a way for me to talk about how I made that career transition, how I make money online as a travel writer, as a content creator, as an author. And so it gave me a whole new platform to explore different aspects of myself. And that really resonated with people. So it grew to over a quarter million followers now on TikTok. And that has led me to work with different travel brands Brands, destinations, and really help their content get seen as well. TikTok says that nearly 5 million businesses use their social media application seeking growth. But those growth expectations could evaporate if the U.S. decides to ban the application. And that's not the only threat to TikTok and its business community. The social media landscape is continually evolving. Ten years ago was Facebook, then Instagram came along, then Twitter came along higher, then uh, you know, uh, Vine came and disappeared, then uh, Parler came and disappeared, then you have LinkedIn appear, then now it's resurfacing. So it's, the, the platforms will keep on changing based on the audience behaviors and where that audience is moving away to be creating that following, to be creating content, and where the creators are spending their time. But for now, Jen and a jet plane and your rich BFF continue to educate and engage their TikTok community. Nitsa Soledad Pires, CGTN, Miami. Okay, let's talk more about TikTok and those who have made it their livelihood. We're joined by Scott Schober, president and CEO of Berkeley Veritronic Systems, and the company designs and tests various cybersecurity products. Welcome to our program. Thanks very much for taking some time. Thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about these TikTok creators, how they have chosen TikTok as opposed to anything else to be their go-to site. Key content themes, how do they make money? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And what's kind of, I call it niche about TikTok is really their algorithm. And I can't say enough about that because their algorithm is what allows them to have success. So you could be a startup uh, new to TikTok and the people that will start following you, it's because of the content that you're putting out there. People will be have content put in front of them that they enjoy. 
And that's what happens. So if your content is very specific, it will now bring you with like-minded other people, business people, influencers, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to quickly grow followings viral. You can't exactly do it the same on other platforms such as Instagram and others. There you try to focus more so on maybe the content, but also the number of people that you have following you. So it's a little bit different game that they're playing. And I think that's one of their most effective things. That algorithm is so fine-tuned and polished, it allows people to make money and, and really take, take advantage of the platform, whether it's a brand ambassador, whether it's getting um, money from their creator fund, right. they have affiliate programs, lots of things to make money. And not just those sheer numbers out there every day. Yeah. You know, lots right. of conversation, obviously, about banning or limiting this platform in the United States. Firstly, explain why that is going on, and where do you believe these efforts stand right now? Yeah, well, it, was, it started back, actually, if you look back to when Trump was president, uh, where all of the stuff started, and it's continuing to go, because I guess they've noticed enough um, privacy concerns and data that's been collected by the company. And that's really the underlying issue there, the lack of privacy. So TikTok, when you download that and you opt into it, you're allowing them to see what you browse on your phone, have access to your contacts, access to your data and metadata more than other social media apps that you download to your phone. So th that's probably the number one thing. And, and basically that, that crosses the line where it could be considered a national security threat in the United States and hence why they're pushing mm. forth. Now Biden's administration just recently pushed forth the Restrictive Act where again they can go in and prevent uh, different groups, especially in the federal government. I think it's about 34 states so far where any government issued devices cannot have TikTok on it, and that's going to continue to grow. Yeah, no downloading on that. I don't know if you had a chance to hear uh, Nitsa Soledad Perez's excellent story there, but I was listening to the young lady who turned or walked away from a $600,000 a year job to do this. Mm -hmm. So obviously, what's a ban going to mean for people like that who rely on TikTok for this, pretty, I guess, lavish lifestyle that she's uh, kind of made out for herself? And do you think these people are preparing, or are they just hoping for the best? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I do think people, when they be, have that growing of followers and they start to really monetize the platform, they must be thinking, what happens if, especially with this uh, potential ban that's going to happen here in the United States. So what they're doing is to look to how can they shift over to YouTube. I think, to me, that would be the number one choice, because YouTube has concentrated and spent a lot of money, Google behind it, mm. making shorter form videos that people can better monetize on than the current way it is. Because right now you have to have commercials and and constantly do things and put out content and, and it's not that lucrative in the world of YouTube. Second to that would really be Meta or Facebook, which is Instagram. Right. And people are looking to that to maybe flock to that. So those are the two dominant platforms that TikTok people will have to go to if they do ban the platform. But you won't be making that same amount of money by any means. And the worst of it, which I feel really bad for people, is you build a community and a following base in TikTok. There's no way to migrate that to YouTube or to Instagram or any other social media platform. You basically start all over. Okay, Scott, not a lot of time, but how do you think TikTok is moving ahead? Are they moving ahead with plans to continue to expand? Uh, obviously, they have to be very careful about how they're doing this. They certainly don't want to get cut off at the knees after sinking all this money, all this investment into it. Yeah, they're going to continually fight things vigorously. Uh, certainly here in the United States, they've already spent uh, $13.4 million so far just in lobbying efforts down in D.C. That's going to probably continue and try to get the community to help and have people shout out and say, hey, I'm, I'm a loyal user. I feel safe using the platform. They'll try to get them to talk it up and, and hopefully win some strength in numbers there so they could succeed. Good stuff. Scott Schober, thanks so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. Appreciate it.